Welcome back everybody to part two of projectile motion. You probably remember my least favorite example is projectile vomiting. In the last video I gave a shout out to my favorite hockey team, the Montreal Canadiens, so now I'm going to give a shout out to my favorite baseball team, the Detroit Tigers. I got interested in sports in about 1966. The Tigers made the World Series in 67 didn't quite win, but they did win in 68. They won again in 84 and a couple times prior to 66. Otherwise, they've had a lot of bad years, but I'm still a faithful fan because I grew up across the river from Detroit, Michigan in Windsor, Ontario. Now, in the last video, when we talked about projectile motion, we came up with the formula for the time in the air when the projectile is launched and lands at the same height, it was two times the original launch speed times the sine of the angle at which it was launched divided by g, the acceleration due to gravity. So this time, let's calculate a formula for the range, the total distance that it travels. Well, in physics, the range will be the average speed times the time. But the horizontal speed is a constant, so the average in that direction is d cos theta, and the time is simply the total time, capital T. So if I substitute this into here, I'm going to get 2, then v times v, so v squared, times the cos of theta and the sine of theta, all divided by g. However, you might know the trig identity that says that 2 times cos theta times sine theta is the sine of 2 theta, so I can simplify that to v squared times the sine of 2 theta divided by g. So the obvious question is, when will the range be a maximum? We found out here that the time in the air is a maximum when the angle is 90, because the sine of 90 is 1, and that's the maximum for sine. So here, this has to be 90, so theta would have to be 45 degrees. So if you go back to our diagram, this is approximately 60, and it travels a path like that. So at the 45 degrees, it will travel further. If I estimate 45 degrees to be like that, it's going to be something like this. That's the maximum. Now there's another interesting property of sine 2 theta. So for example, if theta equals 30 degrees, or if theta equals 60 degrees, then sine 2 theta, or 30, turns out to equal the sine of 2 times 60, which is 120. So over here, when I drew it at 60 degrees and it landed here, if I was to launch it at 30 degrees, it would also land here. Let's draw that. So something like this. Let me give you one more example. This could be maybe 15 degrees. And then this could be 75 degrees because the sine of 30 equals the sine of 150. They're both a half, which is further interesting because if this is a half, then the range will be a half. So if this is the range for 45 degrees, if I launch it at 15 or 75, 75 being steeper, so 
let's say about here, we'll go about half as far. And we'll go higher, something like that. That's 75 degrees. And at 15 degrees, which is about here, we'll go the same distance. So lots of interesting properties to the range. Let's leave it at that. In the next video, we'll talk about the maximum height and how to calculate it. See you then.